Whenever planning your adventures, do you ever plan them with perfect conditions in mind? For instance, blue skies, white mountains and crisp winter air. Well, I certainly did in this adventure, but the reality was somewhat different. Yes, not many blue skies and not many white peaks, that's for sure. Join us as we attempt the West Highland Way in less than ideal conditions. Anyway, let's go back to us starting the adventure on day one. We were hoping to get going and do this trail in quite a short period of time, just over three days, so we'd set the alarm nice and early so I could get up and head to the end of the trail to meet Ray, who was going to be my companion. Here we go, right, picked up Ray, now we're going to head to the start of the trail. What time is it now? Five to six. Oof. Bang on time. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So it was an early start, but we, we were keen to get going because we were close to the winter solstice and there wasn't much in the way of daylight hours. So yeah, off we headed and yeah, we were also hoping to, to do this in under three days, so we needed to put the, the miles in and we knew that would involve a lot of walking in the dark. But anyway, off we set and the rain was already starting as we headed up and on to the West Highland Way. Oh, good morning. Well, it's morning for us. I don't know what time you'll be watching this, but uh, yeah, we are on the West Highland Way again, aren't we, Ray? Again. Again. It's almost a year to the uh, year to the day that we um, completed the first half. <laughs> yes, we bailed. <laughs> right, a quick synopsis of what happened the last time. So we headed off to try and do the West Highland Way in five days, and on the first day, it snowed and on the second day the snow got deeper and deeper and luckily we found a bothy to take refuge in. The next day the snow was still there, there was a turbo thorn but heavy, heavy rain and about a foot of wet soggy snow and as the day went on the river levels rose and it just became harder and harder. We were drenched, the underfoot conditions were awful so we decided to bail onto the train, which was then cancelled and we had to get rescued by Jerry. So yeah, that was the last time. As you can see, it's, um, it's hardly blue skies. Um, it's about, probably about nine o'clock now, isn't it? It is, yeah, and we're just heading off from, well, we set off from Crane Larrick and we're heading to the Green Welly for some breakfast. We're gonna get some breakfast there. So it feels like the middle of the day because I don't know about you, you're probably up before me, I was at quarter to three. Yeah. Yeah. You might have seen that already, but uh, anyway, we'll report back later on. The weather is a bit wet, tomorrow it's looking horrendous, but... Uh, and I've got some gear, thanks to Ray, which I'll go into a very... <laughs> Wait, what are you laughing for? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? Good we'll idea. See. We'll see. More, more about that in a wee while, uh, actually. Yeah, right. Mr. Let's Mr. Go. Ray. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. So off we set towards Tindrum in high spirits and as you've probably guessed we started at Korean Larrick because that's where we yeah we bailed um, almost 12 months ago so we thought we'd finish the trail by starting there and um, yeah head towards Fort William which is about 80 yeah just over 80 kilometres but on today's trek we were planning to get to as far at least as, at least as far as the Bridge of Orkey maybe a bit further to set up camp there. Anyway, on we went along Strathfillan, uh, past some old, I don't know, some old churchyards and graveyards, which I think are linked to, to uh, St. Fillan himself. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it was a bit damp, and the forecast for today was for it to be wet. And there was this helpful, yeah, helpful notice board along the way, just to remind us that it's one of the wettest places in the UK. In fact, I think it's one of the wettest places in Western Europe. So. Yeah, that didn't do much for our mood. <laughs> so with the news that it was going to be wet and we were in the wettest area, it was time for me to deploy my new piece of gear. Look at this beauty. Yes, a six pound umbrella from Amazon. Anyway, on it went. I thought I'd at least give it a go. Go to the end of the video to find out what I really thought of it. Right, I was going to talk about this new piece of gear I've got. Look at that, isn't that a beautiful piece of gear? I'd like to say it was fully functional, but uh, there's a thing called wind 
in Scotland. Um, I think I'd be all right if there was no wind, but Ray <laughs> sent, sends me a text two days ago. I'm going to get a brawly and bring a brawly. So I've got the brawly parked and look like a complete tit. Somebody says that he's forgotten to pack his. <laughs> no comment. You know, there's no, no comment at all. So, uh, yeah, I think actually for this bit where there's no wind, it's actually quite good, but yeah, useless. If there's any wind, it's already blown inside out, isn't it? It's working a treat. It's the fact you even got yellow to match your jacket. Oh, yes. Colour coordination. So, anyway, we're not far from Tyndrum. We'll bring you back when we're uh, getting a coffee. Coffee time. Yeah, let's go. Coffee. I persevered with the Brawley until we got to Tyndrum. And the path, as you'd expect, as it's the West Highland Way, is, is pretty, pretty decent. But um, the rain was, uh, yeah, wasn't letting up, so we were glad when we reached the small town of Tyndrum and uh, ordered ourselves a healthy Scottish breakfast. Right. right, quick bit to camera. We've literally just left Tyndrum. Had a lovely, uh, lovely full Scottish breakfast there to keep us going. I stopped and got a sandwich at the shop. And we're heading up... <laughs> Towards Bridge Orca now, towards the hills, Ben Doran and these sort of places. And this is the bit of the, the way that I was really looking forward to, to be honest with you. Although I know more of more of it because it's next to the road. It's into the kind of into the highlands um, proper and then up to Glencoe. So really looking forward to it. But it's yeah, the rain's coming back on now, it's pushing it down. I don't know if you can make it out behind me, but I'm gonna put the camera away again. I'll try and bring you back if it dries out a wee bit, right? Onwards we go. <laughs> It was showing absolutely zero signs of drying up and we headed along and those mountains, the big one straight ahead there is Ben Duran, uh, it just, just pulls you on even though the heads of the mountains were in the mist it was still beautiful. And at this point we decided we were going to stop at the Bridge of Orkey Hotel for a wee afternoon coffee which we were both looking forward to. So after a few miles of trekking along the West Island Way we finally got to the Bridge of Orkey train station and it's a short hike down to get to the hotel from there. Close to the front, doesn't look very open to me. This might not be happening. Doesn't it look open? Oh, right, well we're at the Bridge of Orkey. We were hoping to get a bite to eat here but it's closed for the winter, we should have known that. And I know the next hotel is as well so we're just going to bash on round. It's, I've not done much filming because it has been literally raining. Hasn't it been pretty pushy? Constant. Yeah. Constant rain. Um, I don't want to get the camera knackered, so I do apologise for that. But when I get the tent up in about an hour, an hour and a half, we've got about, I don't know, a couple of hours till sundown we've done. How many miles did you say? 15 and a half miles over so that's 6 hours and 20 minutes, so... There you go. So, uh, we've, we've done the miles and... Um, yeah, we'll get the tent up. Uh, we could go further, but you know what? The weather is forecast to be... Really, really windy, so uh, tomorrow and tonight. So we'll try and get somewhere sheltered. We'll try and get further round to the Inveroran Hotel, or there or thereabouts, and we'll report back there. But this camera's getting wet again, so I'm going to put it away and I'll report back later on. So we did indeed walk on a bit further past the Inveroran Hotel, and eventually, thanks to Ray's knowledge, because he's done the West Highlands Way a few times before, he knew that there was this spot just beyond the bridge which would give us a wee bit of shelter because the grassy area sits, you know, it's about three or four foot below the road and there's like a wall to provide some shelter because the forecast for the next day was looking horrendous. Um, we subsequently found out there was weather warnings. Anyway, this is where we had the tents and the camp spot was on the map. Oh, right, I don't know if you can, it might steam up, Just try to keep stuff dry, it's been an absolute nightmare, but yeah, we've got the tent up now. I've not done much filming because other cameras got water under the lens and it's uh, steaming up but I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just getting a well earned coffee on so I'll report back once I've had a bite to eat and a coffee and shut this tent door because it is absolutely hammering it down. Woo! I'll tell you what I have and stuff then. <laughs> oh right, just a very quick 
tour of the rain's literally gone off for a minute or two. It's probably going to come back on, but I'll give you a quick tour of the campsite. So if I spin you around, my tent's there. I put it as close to the wall as possible because the gales are coming in from that direction tomorrow. That's looking up Glen Docker. I think we've come in from that direction. It's quite atmospheric. There's uh, Stobgavar and the other Munro. And down here is... There's Ray and his wee tent. What type of tent you got here, Ray? That is the Weishel Venture 1. The Weishel Venture 1. Nice, nice wee compact tent, actually. It looks quite nice. Yeah, bijou. <laughs> bijou, as he says. Yeah, lovely wee spot here. So, yeah, Ray knew about this uh, this spot and it's perfect. It gives us a wee bit of shelter in the morning. We've got a water there for, for water. I've just dropped my water. <laughs> bottle from the filter into the river and I couldn't get it but luckily Ray has got a spare spare one and I filled up my water just before that anyway so yeah the sun, sun sunset has occurred and um, yeah it's going to get dark soon it's, uh, it's not even four o'clock yet so let's uh, let's retire back to the tent and uh, yeah I'll, uh, I'll maybe tell you a wee bit about what clothes and stuff I've got with me and my tent later on Right. Oh, right. It's on here. Well, hopefully you can uh, you can hear me okay. I don't know if you can hear the rain. It's still on. It's literally rained all day, which was forecast. We did expect that. It is the wettest place in Europe, <laughs> or some sort of stat like that. Um, and I've been really looking forward to this 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 part of the hike when we initially came to do it. I've probably done a voiceover about telling you about what happened last year, but the bit I was most excited about was from Tyndrum North because I, I drive the road so often. I've just never walked it, I've never walked away and it's been lovely today seeing it from a different perspective a bit like when I did the Cataran Trail in, um, in Glen Shee seeing the, the, the landscape from being on foot just off the, the road, it's not far but it is it's lovely um, it's been moody and <laughs> the mountains have been hiding themselves for most of the day but yeah we've put a good shift in today probably about 17-18 miles maybe, I don't know Ray has all the stats and tomorrow we're heading to Kinloch Leave and we have already pre-booked uh, some cabins or huts huts there. I don't think it's it's luxury cabins, but uh, that'll be uh, well needed tomorrow. I think tomorrow's more heavy rain, but really strong winds. Uh, gale to storm force in places, but we'll just have to be careful and see. But uh, so far so good. Just I just need to try and dry out all the camera gear now and all my other gear. Um, got my coffee. I'll stop whittling on now and uh, I'll maybe report back <laughs> later on. I do apologise for one, the lack of footage and two, the quality of the footage. It's just so hard to film in these conditions. I, I know I talked about this a few videos ago um, when it was cold, but also it's, it's equally as difficult to to do it when it's so damp and wet. So yeah, I'll bring you back later, hopefully once I've dried out a bit. Right, I'm uh, all snuggled up in my uh, sleeping bag as you can probably see. I still have my tea, uh, I did have quite a lot of tea, but yeah, the wind is picking up and there's some trees across the, um, just across the river, not far from the tent and you can just hear these gusts coming in. Ray's just been over, he's got one of these wee weather station things and it's gusting up to about 30, 35 at the moment. It's to, it's to get up to 40, to, well in places 70 tomorrow, but um, hopefully not here. Um, I think we might feel it a bit more in the morning, but hopefully that'll blow the, the rain through. Anyway, I was going to talk a wee bit about what I was wearing today. Um, if you watch the channel, you know that I bought some new waterproof uh, Jotner gear and I had the uh, the jack on and it's kept me bone dry today, to be honest with you. It's been really good, um, really good piece of kit. Um, I don't really have much confidence in the trousers, so I do have them. I think they're veneer trousers, but I've also put like <laughs> the Montane over trousers on top of them to keep me dry, which to the most part it has. Um, so I've been pretty dry today and it's been pretty wet. It's been a good test for them. Um, probably similar weather conditions to when we did this the last time, it's just the underfoot conditions are a lot better this time, we've cracked in the miles. And it's good to be back in the West Island way and then we'll, we'll get on and complete it. Although we're not doing the whole thing, um, it's Christmas in a few days so we need to get back for the families. We wouldn't have had time to do the full, uh, the full thing but it gives us an excuse to come back and do it another, another time. But yeah, I'm going to get my tea on in a minute and I'll probably report back uh, after I've had my tea and talk a wee bit more about uh, my sleeping system and what I've got today because I've actually got my summer um, I've actually got my summer sleeping um, bag with me but my winter sleeping pad but I'll speak about it later anyway, right 
Let's get some. Uh, let's get some tea on. <laughs> Report back to me, boy. Right, that's, uh, that's tea on. <laughs> I usually leave it for about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and I've got the football on, listening to the football, it's a Wednesday night. Uh, so, that's going to be my evening, I think. Um, what have I got today? I've got a thousand calories Thai green chicken curry. So I'll give that a go. See what that comes out like. And, uh, yeah, it should give me enough calories. It's going to be another big day tomorrow. I reckon it's about... Oh, I put it into the map and it came out about... Uh, 29 kilometres to 30 to get to Kinloch leaving and with the winds forecast to be pretty <laughs> pretty strong it could be an interesting interesting day tomorrow but I'm looking forward to it so I'll probably just uh, not do too many more bits to camera and yeah see you in the morning hopefully I'll sleep alright so I settled down for the evening and it was a bit of a restless night to be honest with you even though I was pitched right next to that wall for shelter. The uh, the winds were very, very gusty during the night. Um, yeah, so I was woken yeah, every half an hour with, uh, with the tent shuggling about. But anyway, here's the stats for day one. Oh, good morning. Slept in a wee bit. It's... Uh time is it? It's about 10 to 7. <laughs> so I'm going to get a coffee. It's been pretty wild. <laughs> it's been pretty wild, rainy, windy night. It's going to be windy today. Windy today, another 18 miles. So I'll just get a coffee on and then start getting packed up. And hopefully I can show you the views because I think this section of the West Island Way is the most wild rugged and beautiful part of the whole trail, in my opinion. Um, anyway, right. Oh, coffee time. So I had some coffee which was much needed and then it was time to start breaking down the, the tent and getting everything packed away. It was a bit damp, it had been raining most of the night, but we were quite lucky that the rain had uh, pushed through just for a short spell while we got the tents down, but that wind was still gusty, and we knew from the forecast that it was going to be a really, really windy day. I'm just glad that we'd found, or Ray had remembered about this little camp spot here, because I think had we been in, in a more exposed uh, location, it would have been of a nightmare of a night. Oh, well, hopefully you can see me okay. I've just left... Um the last civilization before hitting the ski centre, so we've got two or three hours ahead of us. And we now head up over Rannoch Moor. Um, it's not only too bad, it's really, really windy. We're sheltered at the moment in the trees. And lo lots of deer down here as well, which is great. But we're going to be heading up onto the moor soon, so that'll be the real test of just how sheltered it is or not. But we'll report back later on. And uh, we'll see how we're getting on. Look, Ray's waiting on me. Up the trail, there you can see him. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. We had a good few hours ahead of us before getting to the ski centre and we'd decided we were going to have our uh, food when we got there but Rannoch Moor does rise up and is quite exposed. Anyway, this is where we thought we were going to camp, it was another possible spot and it was quite sheltered. We're thinking of camping here, Ray had suggested this bit as well but it's quite sheltered actually. Oh, well, Wonder what it was, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the slots where the second floor beams have come across. What about how is that? We got going, and before long we were up on the exposed, exposed moor, 
And yeah, when those showers came in, the winds picked up and yeah, it was buffeting us about quite a bit. It really was unpleasant in those rain showers. Oh. Ah, right. Hopefully you can see it's okay. We've taken this opportunity to do a bit of filming because since the last time the heavens have opened, haven't they? Yes, it's just been constant waves of rain. Yeah, but it's, it's, look, it's looking more promising, I think. There's a lot of water on the uh, in the ground. There's a stream behind you and here. And, uh, even when we were camped, the, the river, river level rose by about a uh, foot last night. So, Anyway, one of Ray's camp spots that he introduced me to is behind us, this hill. You might be able to make it out on the left of your screen. That's uh, Meal Moor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've been up there quite a few times. I really like it. It's quite easy to get to. It's actually an ideal first winter camp. We've been up there in winter a few times. I've been up with Andrew Park as well. Yeah, I really yeah. like it. And often when, you, yeah, often when you're up there, you'll see people coming along here with the head torches on, doing the West Highland Way. Well, we saw, when we did it, yeah. we saw somebody around about here. There's forest behind you. And we saw a, a light and we were doing it. But yeah, we're up high. And I think Rannoch Moor, there's some sort of statistic that it's the highest level of moorland over a certain height in the UK. So um, yeah, it's quite exposed though. We've chosen this spot here because we're sheltered from these, the, the winds by the trees a wee bit, so uh, don't be fooled, it's a bit wet and wild, so shall we uh, let's crack get on? on? Let's yeah, get on, let's go. We'll report back later on. I don't know, is it starting to brighten up a wee bit? Is that just my imagination? <laughs> so we headed on a bit further along the moor, and we enjoyed this brief spell when the rain wasn't falling but it was still blowy and we could tell that the rain that was falling down here was falling as snow higher up on the higher peaks which we'd soon find out about anyway on we went and yeah more showers came in and it was really just a battle a battle against the elements here head down one foot in front of the other and uh, yeah the ski center couldn't come quickly enough to be honest with you i was looking forward to a nice, a nice bit of grub and also some shelter from the elements. Anyway, before long we could see it in our sights and this, the magnificent sight of Glencoe and Stob Gerard. And we knew from here it wasn't a long walk until we got to the ski centre and that full Scottish breakfast that was waiting for us. I'm not going to lie, this was the second day of having a rather nice big breakfast, but my god, it tasted superb, it was lovely, and it was also nice just to get out of those elements, it was still blowing a hula out there, and the rain was still pattering down. Right, that's us just leaving the uh, Glencoe Mountain Resort, there I was bro, full, full breakfast, you know got your microphone on, but yeah, full breakfast for me and uh, Ray. <laughs> So now we're heading down towards the King's House. I'll spin you around actually so you can see. Yeah, down towards the King's House and that hill there in the middle is Ben a Crewlester and the path goes along there and then heads up to the right to the Devil's Staircase and of course over there is the Book Hill. So, yeah. And the time that we've come out and had something to eat, the, um, the rain's gone off for the time being thankfully. And uh, it's just windy, really, really windy. They were saying in there there was gusts of over 100, I don't know, it was 100 kilometres or 100 miles an hour last night here down the Glen. So this shows you um, the spot that Ray picked last night. It was, it was sheltered, but you could hear it, couldn't you? The trees were up. Uh, anyway, right, I'm going to put the camera away because it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> Lona Hooley. Although the rain had gone off here, and believe me, we were grateful for that, those gale force winds were, well, they were straight in our face, we were, we were walking straight into them, which wasn't uh, wasn't ideal, but anyway, we were just glad it wasn't too wet, but yeah, that didn't last very long, to be honest with you, and before long, yeah, the rain started again, but, uh, anyway, what are you to do? It's Scotland, after all. Ah, right, very short bit to camera, really sorry, it's going to be a lot of voiceover work in this because 
In fact, the rain's coming on again. I've been trying to keep that camera dry. And it's blown the hoolie. I mean, it's knocking us off our feet in foot times, isn't it? Really windy, so... Yeah, this is the part that I was looking forward to the most. A bit that I'm most familiar with. Benna Cruley stands behind us, and then the Buchal Stob Gerrard behind us. It's just an amazing place, so... Yeah, there's another shower coming in, so... I'm gonna put you away, and I'll maybe report back. It's the Devil's Staircase next, but it's just shafts and shafts of rain. It's a storm, basically. Right, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Another shower has gone, been and gone. It's been just <laughs> heads down, one foot in front of the other. But yeah, I'm a very familiar location. See if you can recognise where I am. You recognise that mountain in the background? So that's the Buchel, and we are, yeah, at Alton the Fay, and behind me is the Devil's Staircase, so we'll be heading up, heading up there before a steep pull down to Kinloch Leaven, and uh, yeah, looking forward to getting to the, uh, the huts, uh, Ray booked a couple of huts, so at least we know we don't have to put our wet, <laughs> soggy tents up in the gale force wind, so yeah. I think uh, we'll report back when we're uh, further up. It's a fresh covering of snow on the top as well, which is quite nice. So from out the fee you head up what well, most people dread really when they're doing the West Highland Way which is the Devil's Staircase which takes you up to the highest point on the West Highland Way at around about 550 metres so we headed up there and the wind was now at our side blowing us sideways it wasn't showing any signs of letting up anyway there's the pile of stones that marks the summit and I was glad to get there so that's me at the top of the Devil's Staircase Right, really sorry about that. The camera was struggling with the wind and or the audio specifically. And uh, all I was saying was it was the highest point on the West Island Way and it was actually snowing. And as we descended over the back of the Devil's Staircase and the descent down to Kinloch Leaven, that those those rain showers that had been battering us across Rannoch Moor were falling as snow higher up, and yeah, we were now getting battered by um, yeah snow, as you can see. I'm glad that I had my my glasses on and my buff. It's, those buffs are great. You can use them for so many things. So I'm a bit like a ninja here, but uh, yeah, I was glad. I don't care looking like a ninja. It stops those. Uh, Pieces of snow pelting my face, which um, wasn't wasn't very pleasant. Let me tell you that. It's still a bit of a trek from the top of the Devil Staircase down to Kinloch Leaven, and although it's all well mainly downhill, it still takes it out of you. But uh, anyway. One of the highlights of the whole trip for me was this part of the trail because I got some great views of the Memoirs and views that I'd never seen before because I'd never been on the trail. Right, here we are. We're, um, we're actually within sight. I'll spin you around. If you can see, there we go. That's the ice factor. Um, it can look leaving, thank God. That's been... Um, let's, let's bring the camera into here with that in the background, will we? That's been quite a descent, hasn't it? That was, yeah, it's wild. It is a long trek out. You think it's going to be easier because you're coming down the other side, but some of it's really steep and it's hard on the legs. And there's an occasional bit where you're up and down as well. It's a long trek out. You get to the top of the uh, Devil's Staircase, but it's also a good two or three hours to get down the other side and out. And as I say, that's us there, eh? So. Just, yeah, just before dark, and, um, there was a bit of, came, as we came off the top of the, I don't know if the footage will show it, but a blizzard did come yeah. in the hits, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's been really windy. It's not as windy here, thankfully, but yeah, we're going to go down and get our accommodation, so we'll report back in our, um, yeah, hopefully in our accommodation. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, hopefully you can see me. 
I think the last time I did a bit to camera, we were just outside Kinloch leaving, and it was starting to get dark, although it probably didn't look that dark in the camera, because I've got the settings in auto. Anyway, um, Ray had booked these kind of, um, they're, they're slightly bigger than Hobbit huts, but yeah, there's not that many places open at this time of year. Today was the shortest day of the year. It's the 21st of December today. So, um, yeah, hours of daylight are at a minimum. <laughs> we could have kept walking actually in the dark, but um, we got down here. I'm glad to have got here. I think today's distance is probably similar to yesterday's, but there was, I think there was a bit more elevation. I tell you what, it was windy. It was blowing a hooli. Um, and certainly before we got to the Glencoe Mountain Cafe, I was, yeah, it, it just rained constantly. Well, it didn't rain constantly. There was a few times when it stopped, but it was getting a bit depressing. <laughs> but yeah, the showers came and went. They started to ease off as the day went off, but went on. But yeah, what a, what a day it was. And it's such a fabulous area. I'll put some footage up just now of, previous trips um, around the area so you can see what it's like because I think the footage from today doesn't do it justice. It was very cloudy and wet and windy which is still beautiful in those conditions but you're probably looking at some now, uh, at the moment now it's some fabulous drone footage or time lapse footage from around about Glencoe or um, Rannoch Moor and previous trips where I've visit, visited the area. Uh, and, 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 and one of my highlights of today was actually coming off down the back of the Devil's Staircase. Now, I've been up to the Devil's, Stair up the Devil's Staircase a few times, up to the Bialak, and then <clears throat> explored the mountains on either side. I've never been over the other side, and it was just lovely, a lovely path, and the views to the Memoirs, which were snow-capped, was fantastic. It's always nice going to an area that you haven't seen or explored before. But it was a long day. It was good to have Ray with me as well, a bit of companionship, but it, when it gets tough we can both moan <laughs> how our old joints and muscles are feeling. Um, and it was nice to get down before it got completely dark. Anyway, we're all set for tomorrow. You might not be able to see it, but I've got all my groceries that I got from the co-op. We're going to get up early. We're not going to wait for breakfast. We just want to get up and go because it's about 25 kilometres tomorrow. And we're at sea level here. Excuse me, in the next section rises out of Kinloch Leaven into a glen through the Memoirs before dropping down into Glen Nevis. Um, so it should be good tomorrow. I think it's to be wild again, windy, snow on the top. So I don't think we'll get any snow. We did get snow. We did get snow at the, um, I don't know if it'll come out in the camera, but we did get snow at the top of the Devil's Staircase today. But uh, anyway, Another big day tomorrow with the limited hours of daylight and uh, yeah, I'll stop waffling on now and I'll bring you back in the morning, um, either on the trail or uh, from in here when I'm having a cup of coffee. Right, time for some shut eye. Right, I am just about ready. It is what time are we at? Half past six, been up for oh, about an hour, maybe less than that, maybe just before six. Woke to the sound of the rain hammering <laughs> off the, the roof. It's been raining all night. I don't think it's going to be a dry day. I think it's going to be quite similar to yesterday, maybe just a little bit less wind. Um, but this, the day starts with a steep pool out of Kinloch Leaven, so I, I'm having a coffee just now. I'm going to have two coffees actually and uh, a wee breakfast bar to give me some energy for getting up here. So I'll report back, as I said yesterday was the um, shortest day, so maybe an extra 30 seconds or a couple of minutes of daylight today. <laughs> but we are hoping to get to Fort William and the end of the, high, the West Island way before it gets dark, but time will tell whether we'll manage that or not. We've been pushing it the last few days for um, daylight hours. So anyway, right, shut up Murray, I'll report back on the trail. Let's get this stuff done. My bag ready to go. Right. Time to go into the cold and the wet. Make sure I've not left anything. Right, let's go. 
So it was just before seven o'clock and we'd been up for an hour, so it was time to leave the cabins behind and venture out into the cold, dark, well, night, I suppose, even though it was morning. Today was, uh, as I said, it was round about the shortest day of the year, so even though it was seven o'clock, it was still a good few hours before daylight hit the mountainside. And guess what? It was raining! What a surprise, eh? And once again we were heading straight into that wind, which, although not as windy as the day before, it was still really, really unpleasant, especially with uh, the rain stinging our faces. So up we went, and as I mentioned, it was initially a steep pool to get up into the glen above Kinlochleven. And one of the nice things about the West Highland Way is that, you know, you'd have to be going some to get lost in it and there's a nice track to follow which is a bit reassuring when you're wandering about in the dark waiting for the daylight to appear. At least your head torch illuminates that nice 4x4 track. Anyway, eventually that daylight did come. What didn't happen was the rain didn't go off so when we got to this old ruin, we headed inside to get some shelter. Not from the roof, but from the walls, because the rain was going sideways at this point. Right, hopefully we'll hear me, we just popped into this old ruin to get some shelter. There's loads of water in one. There we go. It's absolutely drook it. It's pushed it down the whole, t- the whole way. <laughs> and there's a lot of heavy So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop here for a minute or two and then we'll get battered on. And, uh, that was some pool out of Kinloch Leaven, that's probably harder than the um, Devil's Staircase, would you think, Ray? Yeah, I mean, uh, technically we'll leave that. Uh, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, it's now half past 8. And we've still got just, just over 11 miles to go. Alright, so we've done 3 or 4 miles. Yeah. So uh, there we go. Ooh. Right, I'll bring you back in a wee while. <laughs> After our little stop at the old ruin, it was back, I was going to say back out into the, the rain and the wind, but as you can see, the the lack of a roof meant we weren't really that sheltered in there, but yeah, along we went, along the path, which at points did resemble a large burn, small river, but uh, yeah, we soon found another ruin and um, took shelter behind the wall for a wee while again. Right, we've just come down to another uh, building, it's behind me actually, the mountains. That's the Memoirs, <laughs> um, which you could see when we came over the Devil's Staircase, but uh, get the free. <laughs> and it's another big building, I mean proper big building blocks as well. It, uh, yeah, it's actually the rain's going off now, but it's a lot colder today, isn't it? Very uh, Really good, good. Well, temps are about fun. halfway. You see the path winding away up over into the distance, so shut up. Hopefully you can hear this okay. <laughs> and we'll just uh, head down Barry on, will we? Let's go. <laughs> This was probably near the high point for the day and I was glad to start dropping down because my hands were quite cold. I did have an extra pair of gloves but couldn't really be bothered taking them out so once we dropped a wee bit of altitude we were getting more comfortable. Right, we're, uh, hopefully you can hear this, there's a wee bit of wind but we're a bit more sheltered and we're heading down towards Glen Nevis. But I, I don't know if you have I've warmed up a bit now, eh? I think we've just dropped a bit of altitude but... Uh, yeah, it's feeling better, it's feeling better. <laughs> I'll spin you around and show you the amazing views of Ben Nevis. <laughs> Honestly, it's over there somewhere, I'm sure of it. Anyway, we'll bring you back later on. Yeehaw! And most of the stuff today has all been on this action cam, so I do apologise, but it's just been... It's dry at the moment, but just an interlude between showers. So, a combination of not wanting to get the other one wet. I'm just being lazy to be honest with you, but uh, anyway, I naively thought, even though Ray told me, that once we got to the high point in the Bealach, it'd be a nice gentle downhill to, uh, until we got to the steep part, but it's very much undulating. <laughs> Up and down, a few steep pools, and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not over, let's put it that way. <laughs> anyway, now I can see the bend. If you look just beyond Ray, it looks tiny on this rubbish camera. But Ben Nevis is a big bulk 
straight ahead of us. Can't see any snow, unfortunately. I would have thought it was being white because the tops of the peaks were quite white yesterday. But the cloud level's down to about 800 metres, so I don't think we'll be seeing any of the snow. But anyway, right on we go. I'll probably report back at Glen Nevis. We were soon on the forestry track that drops you down into Glen Nevis. And we kind of dondered along here. The weather was getting better. I think we were just a bit sheltered, to be honest with you. And uh, after a wee bit of road walking, we reached the end, well, the old end, apparently, of the West Highland Way. And then, yeah, what I'm basically saying here is, yeah, we were almost back at the car from where we'd met super early a few days before. Anyway, let's cut to me in the office and I'll give you a synopsis of what I've thought of our second half of the West Highland Way. Right, well, that was... Um the second part of the West Island Way, uh, we didn't get to the, we didn't go to the official end uh, route because, well, I couldn't be bothered and raised on it about three or four times before. <laughs> so I think uh, it was just before Christmas and going through the uh, centre of Fort William past all the busy shoppers wasn't our idea of fun. But yeah, in total it was, um, oh, what does it say there? Let me just check this. Just over 80, about 81 um, 81 and a half kilometres, which I think is about 50 miles, and 1600, just under 1700 metres of ascent. And it was great. I mean, um, the weather could have been better. I mean, so much for those blue skies that we all hope for when we're planning these things. It didn't quite work out like that, but the weather was pretty bad. It was actually a named storm that had come in. It was named the day before it hit when we were when we were on the trail so we didn't actually realize that but uh, uh yeah it was really quite stormy probably worse weather conditions in last year's where we had to bail um but the big difference was the underfoot ground conditions uh, if you watched last year's video which i'll put a link in the description below to there were you just you couldn't get into your stride we couldn't cover any ground and i said at the time had it been one or the other, it would have been fine, and certainly this trip kind of goes to prove the weather was bad, but because it was just wet and windy, we were still able to see the trail. We weren't trudging through a foot and a half <laughs> of wet, thawing snow. But uh, anyway, the other thing which was different is the gear. Last year I had my, my waterproofs, which were maybe eight or nine years old, maybe ten years old, and the the conditions they, they eventually wetted through um but this year i've bought new gear and i must admit the trousers if you watch the channel you you would have seen me testing the gear out and the jacket's been fine it's always been fine and it was bomber it was fantastic that jotner jacket really saved my skin in this one um i was bone dry but the trousers weren't too bad on on day one when it was basically constant rain i did have a, a pair of over trousers on top of my Jotner trousers, but days two and three I didn't use those, and they, they did they did keep me dry. I did spray them with um, some Nicky Wax waterproof coating. So whether that's made a difference, I don't know, but they were they were okay actually. Um, so I'm not sure what the difference has been, what you know why they um, they became slightly damp in that last trip. But uh, that's what I would say is make sure you've got the right gear if you're going in the winter. Uh, it was typical winter conditions. It wasn't overly cold. Uh, Probably typical Scottish conditions. Uh, I think being out in the really, really cold weather, minus, I mean, I was out in a camp at Mullardock and Stack Polly and, and the temperature was down to almost minus 10, but there was no wind and it was that dry cold. This cold is, is worse when it's above freezing, really wet. If you get wet, you're in trouble. So it's imperative to try and keep the stuff dry. So what I did, the other things which I did this time, uh, I did it the last time as well, I've got a big, massive dry bag which I put everything in inside the rucksack, but I also had a one of these rain covers that I put on the outside of the, the bag in day one, but that became pretty redundant in the wind. Um, same with the brawly. Great ideas if there's no wind, but this is Scotland. <laughs> and yeah, the, the brawly, that was, that was never going to work. The rain cover on the back of the bag kept slipping off in day one, so day two I persevered for a wee while and then it ended up just going in 
uh, it going away. So uh, yeah, that that was that was fine. Um, I took my winter sleeping pad, and um, I think that's most important to keep you warm. But I only took my summer sleeping bag because I knew the temperatures weren't going to be way below. I, I, I checked the temperatures and it. Glen level where we were camping out, they weren't going to get any lower than four or five degrees. And the summer sleeping bag that I've got has got a comfort rating of four and I think an extreme rating down to minus four, but it was certainly warm enough. Um, I think I've mentioned before as well, I, I for my evening down, or not, not down, but my puffy jacket to keep warm, I use my Kila Schmock. I think it's a Bile, Kila Bile Schmock. And it's, um, it's not down, it's Primaloft, which is a synthetic fibre, so if that gets wet, it stays, it keeps the insulation, keeps you warm, whereas down, if it gets wet, it's useless, although down is probably warmer in those minus 10 conditions I was talking about. Um, so, yeah, um, it was pretty good. Uh, it's a shame we've not been able to do it all in, in the winter. Um, it gives me a, an opportunity to go back maybe and do it another time. In the winter, it's so much more difficult because you've got reduced hours of daylight uh, over the three days. Most days, I think we were finished by about 2.33, maybe up to 4. So we were trying to get the tents pitched or to the accommodation just before dark, although we were starting in the dark. I think there's no way you can do these trails in a shorter period in the winter without having to walk in the dark. And it's fine as long as you can see the trail. Like, once again, the Last year we couldn't see the trail because of the snow, which made things more difficult. But as long as you've got a head torch, which is charged and is waterproof, you can just get going. If you don't mind walking in the dark, navigation really isn't an issue on these well-marked trails. So it was great. And again, you don't have to do the whole trail. I mean, oh, controversial statement here. I think I might, you know, if I, if I do the West Island way again, I might just cut out the, the first stage. The mill guy to sort of Loch Lomond is, well, it's okay, but it's not the highlight of the trip. I think it'd be, you know, you know, the side of Loch Lomond is really quite, you know, for me anyway, was the bit where it started to get interesting. The, the bit before that last year was just farmland and a bit boring. And if you've watched the other video that I did recently, which was the Cataran Trail, you see I, I cut bits of that off as well. There's lots of different variations. So just, you know, I, I think, yeah, sometimes you can get pleasure out of saying you've done it, but who cares? <laughs> it's a bit like bagging. Who cares? Um, just do what you want to do. You don't have to do the whole trail at the, the one time. The advantage of these trails is they're, they're marked, so you could just start at any point and, and go um, and, and do these things. So yeah, it was good. It was it was fun. It was it was it was nice to have Ray with me. It was good to have Ray with me as well. That's another thing. Uh, having the prior knowledge, especially for camping on that first day, because I think had we been in a, an exposed location. We would have been struggling. It would have been a, a restless night, you know, out checking the guy lines because it was pretty windy. Uh, I think Ray um, tested his. He had a wee weather station thing, and it was up to forty-five mile an hour. The gusts um, at, at some points would have been pitched the tent. So, um, what else? Oh, the other thing that I had uh, is just over there. I must mention was a, although my mobile phone is waterproof, if the screen gets wet it's very hard to use so i always kept it inside a waterproof casing which um yeah just allowed me to use it a bit uh, a bit easier uh in winter just be aware that the hotels might be closed so the bridge of orca was closed and inveroran was closed we stayed at the mcdonald uh, hotel in uh, kinloch leaven in the huts there they were excellent we had a meal there they were really nice uh, friendly uh, can recommend them. Um, so yeah, that was that. So yeah, not much more to say. Hopefully you've enjoyed this we uh, we trip the, the, that's you know finishing the second half of the uh, West Highland way. It was yeah, it was tough. Is it, I think uh, you know although it's meant to be an, an easy sort of beginner's trail, it is certainly that for navigation. But you're doing a lot of miles. But you, you could walk anyway. Walk on the treadmill for 20 miles a day, and it's going to be tough. <laughs> So don't underestimate these things, especially if you're carrying all your gear, um, especially in winter when you've got all the extra heavy stuff. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to go back and watch the other West Highland Way um, trail, we'll put a link in the description uh, below when we did it last year, or the first half of it last year in, in worse conditions. So, yeah, I'll shut up. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Quit. Right.